Hey guys, it's Alex here and today I've got another After Effects tutorial for you and today I'm going to be going over how to make 3D text in After Effects and also motion track it into a cinematic that you may already have and also set up some reflections and lighting. Um, this sort of follows on from my uh, previous tutorial and that will there will be a link right at the end to that if you missed it and that's where I showed you how to make some 3D text and uh, use some optical flares and lights um, but now I thought I'd take it to the next level and I would show you how to maybe composite into a cinematic and as you can see on the example here you can see the reflections and they are actually all completely in line with the uh, um, or they're, they're reacting to the surroundings so as if as if this was actually there which just makes it a lot feel a lot more real and um yeah so shall we, let, we shall get into it so basically i'm actually doing this for my i think i'm going to enter baker's 50k so i'm actually working on that now so this is going to be a cinematic i use but basically what i've done is i've recorded a cinematic here just a standard cinematic i've scaled it up and just positioned it to get away the uh hod and then i've pre-composed it and i'm just going to drag this into a new composition so I have this at the moment, I'm just going to trim this down a bit, oh, wrong key, so I'm going to press B and then I'm just going to trim that there, and now what I'm going to do is, now you will need CS6 for this, and I definitely recommend you go get it because it has some really nice extra features that can help you out and speed up your uh, workflow a lot, a lot more. So basically, um, in the new CS6, there is a 3D camera tracker. So that saves you going into Bouju and then exporting it and then re-importing it, which just is very time consuming. But all, you, all you've got to do is just type in 3D camera tracker. I apologize for the loud keyboard as well. And you can see that we've got this. So we can drag this onto our clip. Now straight away, it will start analyzing the background. And we can, now you can just leave it. And because it's in the background, you can actually just go go through your different workflow you can go into your different compositions and carry on working and if I was to come back that would be still analyzing in the background so as you can see up in the top here it's on or it's already on 10% pretty much and it's flying through the frames so I don't see much need to actually stop the tutorial because that will be done very soon most likely but I thought while we were waiting, I could show you maybe a sneak preview of what I've actually done so far. Now this clip isn't really worked and I think I'm going to have to change some of that. But I've sort of synced all of this up and it's looking really nice. And I've got these little audio bars along the feed here and also some uh, motion track text along here. And uh, it's looking really nice and uh, I think this could be one of my best edits. I've got a nice colour correction got some nice scope animation in and things like that. I could probably, I think I actually rendered some of this out. Yeah, I did. If I could show you this quickly. So this is, this is just it. So yeah, that was just a little uh, sneak preview while uh, we're waiting for this to motion track. And it is, it's nearly done, but I think I'll probably pause the tutorial uh, now, but they, that was just a little sneak preview of my uh, edit. I don't know how long it's going to take because I usually take quite a long time to uh, do all my edits. But um, yeah, I will keep you posted on that. So I'm just going to pause the tutorial because it's still got a while to go. But basically, it will keep on tracking. And as you can see, it's got a minute and then it will solve the camera. And then you'll see all these points come up. So I'll be back in a minute once this is done. And I will see you then. Okay, so I'm back and it is now finished um, tracking and it has solved our camera. So now you will be able to see all of these different little points and they are our tracking solved camera data. So we can now, if you hover, so if I go to a good point where I've got some flat sort of ground here, you can see that as I place my um, mouse, this target will come up and you can then select the point. So I'm just going to hold it and, and select some points by drawing a little circle and I can hold shift and then select some more I don't know why my screen's going on like that but it's probably because I'm in a, 
Oh, it's adaptive resolution, but remember to hold shift. And uh, we can just select some of these points until you get a ground plane that looks like it matches your um, your scene. So that looks pretty good. And then what we can do is right click and we can create a new text and camera. Like that. So it will take a bit of time and I've already got Ray Trace 3D on which we will need to make the... Um, the text 3D and get the reflective options up. So it will take quite a bit of time just to load up and there we have it. So now we have our 3D camera and a text layer and you can see the text layer down here. But we don't, well personally I don't want it down there. You could have it down there, but I'm just going to rotate this up. And I'm just gonna position it roughly. So I'll drag it up a bit. So obviously you'll have your own cinematic. You just wanna spend some time scrubbing through, lining it up, I want to push it back a bit in the uh, camera and drag it up maybe a bit more and we can also scale it up like that and I could probably just rotate this back but obviously you would want to make this oh, um, like that, so you would want to make this perfect and uh, I could always change the text actually. So now we have our basic 2D text and now you can see that it is all nicely motion tracked. That can come across a bit. So yeah, just play play around with it until you get something that looks nice, which that is looking very nice. So it's all motion tracked in very nicely and that's why, that's why I love the, the CS6. It's just so quick and easy. And you get literally flawless motion tracking, and like I haven't, I've used it a couple of times and I haven't faulted it. So now, if you don't have your ray trace three D on, you're going to want to cl click up here, and it will uh, say classic three D, and you just want to go to this drop down and click ray traced, and make sure it's on uh, draft, or if you've got a really good computer, you can put that up a bit. But while we're working, you just want to keep it quite low, because it will, it does, it does take a lot to render. And literally, we can drop down our options on our text layer, and you will see geometry options and material options will appear. And we can then extrude our text. Maybe, oh, I don't know what happened there. The color scheme has changed. All right, that was a bit weird. Anyway, um, we can maybe make this uh, 75. So that extrudes out, and we can make this. Uh, convex and maybe make this four. So now we have a nice bevel on it, but you can't really tell anything because we need to set up our lights. So we're going to go layer, new, light, and we're going to make it a parallel light. Make the intensity about 50 and make sure cast shadows are on and shadow darkness is about 200 with a fall off of none. And we can click and now we will see we get some, it looks, it looks a bit better because it has some nice um, sort of shadows to it so we can just drag that in a bit closer and we can make another light we can go new light and we can make this a spotlight and we can make the intensity 50 and just keep everything the same except the shadow diffusion shadow diffusion make that around a hundred I think that would look quite good so this will just brighten it up and we can just drag this forward because it's a spot, you can see it starts to fade off a bit, so I just want to drag this across to light up the other side, like that, like so. And then we can make another light, and this can be an ambient light, and this is just going to make everything a lot brighter, as you will see, like that. So now we have our lighting set up. The next thing we can do is we can copy our clip layer, or your, your cinematic, by clicking Control G, Control D to duplicate. I'll just take the sound off, and we can right click, and we can make this an environment layer. So what this is going to do is, as this loads, which it has, if I just unsolo, if I take that off, you can see that it wraps round um, and gives us. So essentially, if it was in Cinema 4D, it would be the same as a sky. So it wraps round, and this is how we're going to get our refre reflections. But before we do that, what we can do is we can type in. Uh, camera Oops. camera we can type in uh, camera and there you'll see a camera lens blur and we can drag that onto in our environment there and what this will do this will just blur it out 
So as our, so we don't want our reflections, well I personally don't want my reflections very sharp, I want them quite blurred so you can't actually really see them which is how it is normally in real life. Real life. So it's just all about, oh wrong comp, so it's all about just trying to make it a bit uh, more realistic. And we can put our cinematic back on and now you can't see it really affecting the text. So what we can do is we can go into our text there and we can drop down the material options and then you will see lots of different op um, options and we can put up the reflection intensity so if I put it all this way up to the 100 you can see you get this really reflective text that is reacting to the environment around it but I'm just going to put it down to about 50 and I mean you can you can mess around with a lot of these so you can change you can change with the specular and like that which will make it a bit brighter and there's there's so many customizations you can do and I mean literally anything is now motion trackable because we have this camera so I mean you could do anything I'm just trying to think of something that you could do so like obviously what I touched on before was the uh, optical flares so I say if I just try to do this quickly um, this is just an example of something that you could do and then we can make it 3D and now if we if I just change the blending mode to add you can see that this should be motion tracked into the scene oh it's got it's a bit far away at the moment I don't know really oh, here we go so now if I just zoom back in you can see the little flare there obviously you need to play around with it and whatnot but you can see that that is staying in the scene and that looks really quite nice so you could do some cool stuff with this I mean that even looks quite cool you could drag that like behind your tech layer or something text layer and have it sort of boosting from behind I have no idea but you could play around with it and do whatever and but that will be all motion tracked into the scene so yeah that is basically the tutorial and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and um, I will be doing I will be doing a tutorial on the um, Cinema 4D lights, but I don't actually have Cinema 4D on this computer because I just recently got a new computer So I'm going to be trying to get that all set up and then I will make a tutorial on that But yeah, I hope you enjoyed and uh, if this interested you and you liked the and you liked it then drop a like uh, and yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one. Yep. Yeah, thanks guys